What did Woody Allen say? He said, I wish to obtain immortality by not dying. <laughs> I suppose, in my case, I just want things to go on forever. I'm marking my 70th birthday quietly. It's not an occasion to particularly celebrate, I think. But on the other hand, as a theorist, I was supposed to have stopped working when I was 35, but here I am at twice that age, and actually the last 10 years have been perhaps the most productive of my entire career, and I hope they'll continue for a little while yet. I was recently awarded the Newton Medal of the Institute of Physics. Um, I'm very pleased to get this medal. The significance of awards to me is recognition by my fellow scientists. So it's always nice to have your friends tell you that you're doing well and that they appreciate your work. I was always interested in science. I can't remember a time when I wasn't uh, thinking about problems. My family is uh, from the north of England um, and I was brought up in, in Ashton under Lyne in Lancashire. It was a very resilient and uh, tough family on my maternal grandmother's side and since we live with my grandmother as a small boy that, that side of the family was very much the dominant influence in my, my life. Um, we lived in her sweet shop Previous to the sweet shop, um, when my uncle was uh, living still with the family, they, they ran an, an electrical shop and all the little bits of kit from the electrical shop were down there in the cellar. And there was uh, a treasure trove of, of electrical equipment, light fittings and uh, the old fashioned uh, carbon filament, uh, electrical bulbs, um, lots of wire. Eventually, when I got a bit older, we had a chemistry set, and of course, every young boy with a chemistry set isn't content with that. He goes on to make explosives and fireworks and so on, which I did. And quite a few electrical shocks along the way, I must say. But when I, whenever I got really stuck, I'd go to my uncle. He would come and uh, play the piano and play with me, and uh, we'd, we'd talk science because he, he was an engineer, an electrical engineer. And so any real difficulties I bumped into, I'd ask him about it and he'd either answer my question or even more usefully, he'd uh, introduce me to books and magazines. That experience of playing with, with technical and scientific uh, toys um, taught me a great deal, not so much about the academic side with the mathematics and so on, which I, I learned at school, but very much about uh, how to ask questions. So now when I approach a problem, I can see that um, child asking, um, what is fire made of? It's the obvious question to ask. And, and my mind works in the same way when I, I approach perhaps a more sophisticated problem uh, in my 70th year. <laughs> I spent 13 years in Cambridge and that was really rather a, a, a monastic existence. The uh, colleges were single sex in those days. Um, the women were in very short supply and uh, very fortunate that Cavendish in 1973 recruited a young lady from Oxford who was a group theorist. Uh, she was in the room down the hall from mine and we began to date one another and uh, eventually we, we got married after quite a long time, actually. It took us two years to tie the knot. When you speak of my wife and my work, a, a story of uh, P.G. Wodehouse comes to mind. One, one of his books was dedicated to his wife, and in the dedication he said, to my wife, without whose help this book would have finished in half the time. And I think that's the influence my wife has on my work. <laughs> in other words, 
uh, a company is so delightful that I'm easily distracted from what I'm doing at the time. <laughs>
in my work I do try to be very diverse and to, to look to far horizon and different things and so on. And so it is that when I, I'm not working, or playing as some would say, um, I, I like to do things which are really very different. Photography is one thing, that's the, the easy things. Uh, one of the first interests I had in optics was the diffraction of light from structures. Um, so you can make colour in two different ways. One is to have a, a chemical which uh, absorbs part of the white light, leaving only, say, the red. But there's another way, and that is you can bounce light off very, very tiny structures which respond only to light of a certain colour. And that's called diffractive colour. And, and butterflies are very good at using structure for colour. So if you see a butterfly that's blue or green, then it will almost always have metallic sheen to it. And that's a signature that the colour is not coming from chemistry, that it's coming from structure. To sort of draw people into my lectures on this, I thought it would be a good idea if I had some photographs of butterflies. And so uh, I started taking these photographs myself. I, I now take lots and lots of photographs of butterflies that never see a scientific meeting, of course. <laughs> I like hard challenges. I would like to solve a really, really difficult problem. And I'm being tempted at the moment to return to my work on disorder. I haven't decided to do it yet. Of course, just as when I came to Imperial College and was settled as a professor, I thought I could have the freedom to tackle a difficult problem. Now I've got the Newton Medal, I feel that frees me up to say, well, OK, I, I can do something which might fail very badly now. And, and so my, I might turn back to the parts of that disordered problem that I failed to solve all those years ago and try again. <laughs>